welcome all to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the Community Relations Manager here at Accessvi and a passionate disability rights advocate and attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessvi Spotlight Sessions, we're joined by Edmund E.Q. Sylvester, the chairman and founder of United States Adaptive Golf Alliance. Welcome, E.Q. Thanks, Joshua. I'm very pleased and proud to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have you here, and I feel like this is going to be a really fun conversation today. And I'm a huge fan of golf, and especially adaptive golf. So let's dive into this. So tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing at United States Adaptive Golf Alliance. Well, I'm a triple amputee. Um, I suffered septus back in 2011 when I retired from my company and I was ready to play golf around the world and take a lot of photographs, both of my favorite hobbies. But um, when I got septus, I went into a coma and I was very fortunate that the hospital in New York gave me a cocktail of antibiotics. So I was able to come out of the coma approximately a couple of hours before dialysis had to be applied. Um, I was in the hospital for nine months. Um, I had 12 operations and I left as a triple amputee and I really had to figure out what to do with my new body. Um, and I did, I was able to swim, but I had a hard time getting out of the pool because all of a sudden I didn't have any fingers. <laughs> and um, I did ride a horse and I didn't fall off. But then when I tried my favorite sport, which was golf, I couldn't hit the ball out of my shadow. And I said, oh my God, what's going on here? So I did some research and I found out that there are 20 million physically disabled who want to play golf, but don't because of two constraints. One, they didn't know where to get adaptive golf instruction. And two, this is the worst part, when they went to a golf course, they were turned away. So I said, let me see what I can do to overcome those constraints. So I gave my first lesson in January 20, 2013, six months after I'd gotten out of the hospital to a young man who was suffering from multiple sclerosis. And he was in a, he was in a wheelchair, never played golf before, but we put a golf club in his hand and he did hit the golf ball and you've never seen a larger smile on anyone's face ever. And his caregiver came up to me and said, EQ, do you know why this is one of the happiest moments in Abraham's life? I said, no, I don't. It's because when he comes home from school, his parents put him on a couch and tell him to watch television. So then I knew I was hooked. And so I was on the right track to include more disabled in the game of golf. And that first year we helped 178 disabled players enjoy the game or at least hit a golf ball. We went so far that in 2019, just before COVID hit in Illinois alone, we provided the joy of golf to 9,499 individuals. Wow. When I was down in Mesquite in, in 2012, in Nevada, I was watching the pair long drive contest and I was just amazed at the way these individuals hit a golf ball, whether they were below the knee, double below the knee, one leg, one arm, and sensory challenged. And I went up to them and I said, guys, what are you doing about the Paralympic Games? And they said, well, we've been talking about it. I said, how long? Six years. I said, wait a minute. Don't you think we should do something about this? And unfortunately, I raised my hand and volunteered. And I started the United States Adaptive Golf Alliance in 2014. And in 2015, we had five members. 
and these were adaptive golf mem uh, company, not companies, um, 501c3s that on their own were teaching or compete uh, in with disabled. And Bob Wilson, I think early 50s, started the North American and Amputee Golf Association, and they started building up amputee golf and um, they were one of the first starters of adaptive golf in our country. So those five started, and today we have 39 disabled organizations around the country, helping approximately 40,000 disabled play the game of golf, of which 26% are combat wounded veterans. Wow. And how thrilling is to pay back those wonderful veterans for what they're doing for us. And you know, they went to war without a challenge and then they came back and they're the ones that are most aggressive in overcoming their personal challenge. And anyone who has overcome their personal setback and taken on the challenge of golf are fabulous people. And we, our mission is to keep growing uh, the inclusion of the disabled in the game of golf. And my my real goal is to get over the politics, uh, international politics of the Para Paralympics and make sure that maybe in Paris in 2024, we will be able to have golf accepted as a trial program in Paris at the Paralympic Games. That's so awesome. That be fabulous? Well, there's, there's, there's no doubt that you are you are growing in the right direction, going from 100 to 9,000 in Illinois alone. So, what what do people, if if some if one of our viewers has a family member if they have a disability and they want to do some adaptive golfing, how do they how do they learn more about you and get out on the course? Just go to our website, www usaga.org and then they'll see a map where all our members are and all they have to do is contact the closest member to where they are there's the name of the person who runs that organization call them up use my name if you wish and they will help you uh in whatever you want to do um but everybody let it be known eq sent you there yeah, that's right and, uh, yeah, that's right please and we've also started, Josh, a, a wonderful organization about a year ago called the Women's Paragolf Committee. And their mission is to drive the inclusion of disabled women in the game. Because I found out that disabled women don't feel included. And, you know, they think it's a men's game or, you know, women, you know, just are not allowed to play in tournaments. And, you know, we, they asked me, are we allowed to play in tournaments? And I said, of course. And they said, are we allowed to get instruction? Of course. And they were so thrilled. It was sort of like letting cats out of a bag. They just went wild. They were just fabulous. And the wonderful thing is that with years of pushing, on the 125th anniversary of the United States Golf Association, which is the national governing body for golf in our country. On their 125th anniversary last December, they announced the first US Adaptive Open for the adaptive golf community. And that's gonna be held in Pinehurst this July 18th to the 20th. And I asked them, are women allowed, disabled women? And they said, absolutely. So you can imagine what we've been able to achieve at the highest level in our country. And now I'm gonna see if I can't bring them together and say, let's move forward with the International Golf Foundation and ask them to push for the inclusion of the disabled in the game of golf and the Paralympic Games. Well, that's where we are, Josh. Well, you guys are moving in the right direction and continue to shake things up and turn heads and, and bring just a lot of
happiness and smiles and 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 sport to people. I'd, so what? Why is it so important that brings sport, sports in general, to people with disabilities? Why is adaptive golf such a big thing in the lives of people with disabilities? Well, that's a great question. You know, when I was a golfer, I think I've mentioned that. You know, you want to lower your handicap, not the handicap we talk about, but the handicap in golf. And, you know, so you work hard to sink the pot. You you work hard to make that long drive and land in the middle of the fairway. But this is something more than that. I didn't realize, you know, of course, I go to a physical therapist every now and then. And I asked him, I noticed the change of people when they hit a golf ball and they said it's it's a sense of uh, of a wonderment because they've been able to do that but there are also therapeutic and rehabilitative benefits in the game of golf and i work with some combat wounded veterans who are suffering from ptsd and their attitudes changed from the first hole to the ninth hole and I asked again the physical therapist, what's going on? And they said, what's happening is that golf is one of those rare sports where the arms cross the brain. And that's having a positive effect on those individuals with, with PTSD. I can go on with my studies of PTSD. We even have a program that we think we can help treat uh, those veterans with PTSD. It's on test now at the Walter Reed Hospital in Washington. And as soon as COVID, which is just about now, we're able to go over there and and implement the program. And it, it, it'll be explosive because we've seen the impact already. And I can send you, if you wish, uh, a video testimonial of about four um, wounded veterans suffering from PTSD telling you what the impact of this program has been on them in changing their lives. So that's, that's a lot I'm about one, golf. I'm one, town, I'm one town over from Walter Reed. So I love, I'd love to watch that video. Oh, I will send it to you. Are you that near to Walter Reed? Yep. Yeah, I, up until last year, I, I lived about a quarter of a mile from it and then I moved one town over. Oh, so, fabulous. You have to send me right your address there. because you know, I'm hoping to go over to Walter Reed's fairly soon. As soon as they've made some changes in their personnel, I need to get it all started up again. Uh, it's a little bureaucratic, but to me, if Walter Reed says this is a program that works, well, then Katie bar the door of where it can go. There are 350,000 wounded veterans that are suffering from PTSD, and that's not the total. Wow. And uh, there's, you know, adaptive golf has changed my life since my injury. And there's just something special about just getting outside of your home and being just surrounded by so much green. Yes. And there's just, green is just so therapeutic. And to, like be able to turn off your cell phone or put your cell phone to some music and just, I don't know, just however you want to play the game of golf. I've seen you on the golf course. There. I've seen a video of you on the golf course. And tell us about this wonderful game you have called Slingshot Golf. Um, so after, after my injury, I, I had to find a way to get back out there. So one day I, I had a dream of developing a pendulum putting device that would allow me to putt because I don't have the use of my arms to physically, you know, hold a golf club. So it's like a, a putting device that sits on the green and my caregiver pushes the handle forward, that putter head goes back it swings like a perfect pendulum. And then I put a protractor on the on the shaft. And d depending if I want a five foot putt or 120 foot putt, it's basically calibrated perfectly to that. Wow. And, uh, and then to hit the long ball, we use a slingshot. And my caregiver can launch it anywhere from 100 yards to 160 yards with precision accuracy. Whoa. So it's, it's, it's a fun game. We brought a, a bunch of families out and now that I Know more about you what you're doing I, I can't wait to team up with you guys well i'm gonna if, if you let me i'm gonna try that on a hole uh that we have this outing this will be our ninth year of outing um 
where we have regular players and disabled players all together. And I would love to have that on a particular hole. So everybody is using that process and working together to win the big prize. Wouldn't that be fun? I love it. We'll definitely talk more about that and make it cool. happen. That sounds awesome. Cool. And so I, I would love, what, what are some more stories of some adaptive golfers that just like, just stayed with you and like, and, and kind of changed your well, perspective on golf? Josh, there's so many, but I, I have a couple favorites. Um, we, we provide a clinic at the Shriners tour down in Las Vegas. And that's because the Shriners bring the ambassadors from their hospitals, the disabled and about, they have 26 hospitals. So there are 26 kids that, you know, have their top bass ambassadors, but they're all disabled one way or the other. And so we hold a clinic there and teach those kids, you know, how to play golf. One of them, I said, you, you're swinging pretty well, do you play golf? Yes, I love golf and I want to be the first woman on the Paralympic Games. And I said, fabulous. Another woman though, her name was Alana. And she had one leg, she was on crutches and she was from Mexico. And I, I'm pretty fluent in Spanish. I spent many years in South America. And um, I said, Alana, do you want to hit a golf ball? She said, yes, I do. So I told her how to hold the golf club. She's leaning on one crutch. And did I lose you, Josh? No, I'm here. Okay, I just didn't see your picture. So um, I, I said, Alana, do you want to hit a golf ball? And she said, yes. So we taught her how to hit it. And she dropped one crutch and she started hitting the golf ball. I walked away and 10 minutes later, I looked back, there she was standing on one leg hitting a golf ball. It was the most unbelievable thing I've seen. Another wonderful story is about Bill, who was 16, 17, and he was losing his sight. He was becoming very depressed and actually turning into an alcoholic. We were able to help him hit a golf ball and it takes a coach to do that. And so we coached him and he started hitting the pretty golf ball pretty well. And then he came up to Crystal Downs in Michigan, which is a private course where we brought about 10 or 15 of our disabled players to play against the members. And Bill was on the first tee and our coach would tell him, okay, click right, click left, ready, ready. And Bill hit it about 200 yards in the middle of a 20 mile an hour wind. Now that was a great accomplishment, but the best accomplishment, John, is he went back to college and re-registered. I love that. And that's because of golf. I love that. Oh, they're all kinds oh, of stories. Awesome. I'll tell you one more that stroke victim, Ralph, uh, after a couple of sessions with us, he started hitting a golf ball again and his wife came up to me and said, EQ, I don't think this is very, the right thing for, for, um, the, my husband. And I said, Mary, why not? Well, the problem is he's starting to speak again. Well, Mary, what's the matter with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem, real problem is he's starting to tell the same old dirty jokes. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, there are all kinds of them, Josh. And well, I, I, I love whenever you're bringing out tens of thousands of people every year, you're, you're making so many stories, you're making, changing so many lives. So it's that in itself is an incredible accomplishment, but I'd love to know, is there any other like big accomplishment that just like stands out over the years that you're really proud of? Well, we were given the Bacardi Award by John Kemp. That makes me very proud. Um, we are partners with the PGA of America, which is also very, very touching. Um, the, I got award for my school 
um, the alumni award, and I'm very proud of that. And I'm I'm working to start golf at that school. Um, it's a boarding school in the east, um, and um, uh, those awards really are meaningful to me. Uh, I got the Dennis Walters Award. Dennis is a paraplegic. Uh, he had an accident with his golf cart, and um, he puts on golf shows from his wheelchair, not from his wheelchair, but from his golf cart, and um, he just uses golf to maintain sanity. Um, and I got his award uh, for, you know, inclusion and helping the disabled through the game of golf. So I, I'm very fortunate to receive these awards. And um, I, I guess those are the proud moments. And for our company, there are basically four things that we use to drive us forward. And that is vision. Uh, I'm very fortunate, I think, to have borne with a sense of vision. And I use that to promote direction and where we, we should be going for our, we only have four employees, but we work obviously through our 39 organizations to do more. And we, we with your support, we hope to develop more interest and more inclusion uh, of our population. And then of course, get a habit, you know, do we do the same thing mostly? And I would say yes, because we have set the standards for competitions and rankings for disabled people in this country. And we hold about 20 tournaments a year, all with the same standards. And now we're, we're ranking, oh, probably 400 uh, disabled golfers who are really strong competitors. So that's, that's a, a great step forward. And then of course, innovation, uh, something like, um, slingshot golf. I mean, is that a wonderful innovation? Yes. And would that bring a lot of fun to people? Yes. So we're always looking for wonderful things like that. And I'm working, working with another man who has kind of invented a, a swing stabilizer where you can be buckled in a little bit, stand on it. And uh, especially for those who are, you know, disabled below the waist or double amputee like I am, that would really stabilize my body and I could swing and maybe have more fun and it can attach to a golf cart. So it's, it just comes with you. You don't have to pull it or push it or anything like that. So, you know, I love everything that you guys are doing. And it's, I just want to thank you so much for being on the program today and with accessibility spotlight sessions, this was a fun interview and you guys, you're amazing. The USGA or United States golf Alliance uh, is, is amazing and everything our adaptive golf Alliance. It's incredible and everything that you're doing. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And uh, I just want to say to all of our viewers uh, on our spotlight sessions, thank you for joining us to the end. And um, uh, that's, that's today's show. Joshua, it's been an honor for us. Thank you very much. We're very proud of you. And of course, what you're doing uh, for so many others as well as your family and a new baby boy, how terrific. God, is that exciting. Thank you, Ikea. All right, take care, everyone. Till next time.